y'all welcome back to my channel my name is Christina and on my channel I like to talk about the baby whisperer Tracy Hogg this is her book it's called the baby whisperer solves all your problems and this is the book that I've used now for both of my daughters basically for everything it is a lifesaver I highly recommend it today we are going to be talking about short naps and also early wakings and early night wakings and problems sleeping and one of Tracy Hogg's solutions to all of those problems. So one problem that plagues lots and lots of parents are short naps. When you put your baby down for a nap and they only sleep like 30 to 45 minutes and they wake up and they're crying and it just doesn't seem like they want to sleep anymore or that they can't sleep anymore. And obviously that is a problem because when our babies don't sleep well during the day, they often also don't sleep well at night. And so at night, if, you know, obviously we're not gonna talk about like if your baby is actually hungry at night, but if they are waking up at night and they're supposed to be sleeping, they, they're not hungry, they don't need anything else, they're just struggling to get back to sleep, as well as if they wake up too early in the morning, like if you want them to start their day at seven, but they keep waking up at five or six, how to extend that period as well is also a big problem area. So talking about short naps first, you often see that 30 to 45 minute nap and it gets really frustrating, especially as your child grows and they're expected to go from hour to hour and a half long naps to two hour naps, especially around four months. Obviously a 45 minute nap is not gonna be as restful as a two hour nap. So it's important that our children are taking the amount of time during their naps that they need in order to get adequate rest. And the reason that we do see those short naps is because 45 minutes is simply just the length of a human sleep cycle. So what's happening is our babies are going to sleep, they're getting in a full sleep cycle, and then they're waking up and they're having a more difficult time going back to sleep and connecting their sleep cycles together. And this is something that you and I do all of the time. If you can think of a time, probably recently in the last few days, where you were sleeping and then you naturally kind of just woke up, it was still the middle of the night, and you might look around or just close your eyes, roll over and you just go back to sleep. That means that your sleep cycle ended and you just simply were able to connect to a new one. Unfortunately, it's a skill that we have to learn and most babies do not yet have that skill. So when they're taking a nap, they start to wake up and they slowly, slowly wake up more and more and they find it even more difficult to go back to sleep and they don't have the skill yet to put themselves back to sleep. And so usually that's where sleep training can come into place. Before four months, Tracy Hogg recommends her 4S method. I have a video linked up above that you can look at if you're interested in that. And four months and above, you would do the pick up, put down method. I also have a video up above right now that you can take a look at for that as well. But what we're gonna be talking about today is her wake to sleep method. And it is sleep training, but it's like a really, really easy version of sleep training. And it can be done with any child, any age, even up through toddlerhood, it can be done. And it will help to extend those naps. And then again, also help with early wakings at night if your child is not making it to their morning time, which might be like around 7 a.m. or so, or if they have like a habitual night waking, like you find multiple nights in a row that they wake up at 3 a.m. for no particular reason and they struggle to get back to sleep at that time and you have to interfere somehow, whether that is sleep training or whether it, they're not quite ready for pick up, put down yet. And you're taking the time essentially out of your night to put them back down. Wake to sleep is the technique that you'd want to learn in order to help them go back down. So first I'm going to describe what wake to sleep is and then we're going to look at three age groups and how you would apply that differently. So it's a pretty simple idea. It's you're waking up your child actually in order to get them to sleep longer. And it seems really counterintuitive at first, but then once you learn it, it's going to make a lot of sense. So let's talk about naps. When your child has a 45 minute nap, they slowly wake up probably around 40 minutes or so and then they struggle to get back down. So the idea is that if you kind of lightly wake them up before they wake themselves up and get too awake, then they might actually be able to better connect their sleep cycles and you're essentially resetting their clock. 
And so you're essentially, you're just helping them get that practice so that they can connect sleep cycles together. So if you know your child is supposed to take a two hour nap and they wake up after 45 minutes exactly, almost every single time, you would go in to their room around 30 minutes and you would slightly wake them up. For some babies, like just opening the door will wake them up. What you're looking for is not a full waking, obviously. It's just for them to be laying there still and then they just kind of like move because the opening of the door kind of like the sound or the action or the light maybe coming in kind of shock them awake a little bit but they should settle themselves or some babies might even need you to come up and like shake them a little bit in order to help wake them up and then you might want to stick around just to make sure your child does settle back down especially if you think you might have woken them up too much obviously we don't want that but you just want to wake them up a little bit so that they can easily go back to sleep and have another hopefully 45 minute stretch. And when it comes to naps in those situations, I find that once my children, when they take long naps, once they connect two sleep cycles together, they can easily connect their third sleep cycle. But if your child just always struggles with every sleep cycle, you might even have to, after 30 more minutes, go in again to help them connect that final sleep cycle to make that nap two hours long, if that's what you're aiming for. Okay, so that's basically wake to sleep in its simplest form. And I'm gonna give you some more details as we look at each age group and appropriate way that you would use wake to sleep technique with each age. So first we're gonna look at newborns. So anywhere from zero to three months, even up to four months, basically any baby that is not yet ready to be sleep trained. This is gonna be the easiest time to do wake to sleep. And it is also the most important time to do wake to sleep because once your child starts developing a habit of taking short naps, then that becomes more difficult for them to break. So if during this age, they constantly wake up at the 45 minute mark and you end their nap and you say, okay, well, you're not going back to sleep, then you're teaching them that naps are only 45 minutes and it's going to be more difficult for them to actually piece their sleep cycles together. So if you're starting to see this problem emerge, even if it's every now and then, you really want to nip it in the bud as soon as possible. And so if you know your child's last nap is 45 minutes, then you need to assume that their next one will be the same as well. So that's when you're gonna go in at that 30 minute mark and you're going to try to wake them up this is probably the easiest one to do. I think at this age, when they're so young, they can easily kind of be woken up lightly and then go back to sleep. But what you will want to do is when you do wake them up, whatever it is that wakes them up a little bit, it could even be, I've heard, like putting a pacifier in their mouth, just kind of like triggering them to do something with their body. I've had to, with my daughter, like move her arm just kind of to like shake her and then she kind of moves her arms it gets really comfortable again but essentially whatever it is you do you want to stick around and see that your child is settling you don't want to just wake them up and then leave the room as fast as possible and so you might need to sit for a couple minutes with them Tracy Hogg even says at some point in her book like 20 minutes to sit with them to make sure that they actually go back to sleep I don't know if it'll always take that long, it might take that long on a baby who struggles with this more. It's never taken me that long when I have done it. The few times I've done it, I honestly have not done it that much with my daughter. But you can sit with them and if you see that they're actually having a more difficult time going back to sleep, you can start patting them on the back to help them rest and settle. And even doing a shush pat, so making that shush sound with your noise or with your voice <laughs> to help distract them so that they can settle and relax and go back to sleep. And that shush pat is gonna be the most effective at this age between zero and four months, especially if you usually do the shush pat with the 4S routine and that's how you put them to sleep. And at this age range, you're probably not gonna use this at night unless your child is closer to three months and they don't have any nighttime feeds anymore, but you are seeing a habitual wake up happen. I'll talk a little bit about that in the next age group, which is four to 12 months. So you might be dealing with a habitual nighttime waking as well as dealing with short naps at this point. And this is where it kind of gets a little more difficult, but it's still pretty easy to fix with sleep to wake. I kind of like to consider sleep to wake sleep training without 
effort <laughs> or without all of the work it is. So for example, we just actually started sleep training with Pick Up Put Down, our second daughter, this last week, which hopefully we'll have a video about in the next week or two. But we were sick before that. You should not sleep train your child when they are sick. Even with put, Pick Up Put Down, don't do it. It's just not a great idea. And so I was going to start earlier, but then we got sick and so I had to postpone Pick Up Put Down, but I really wanted to do it. And so sleep to wake was actually the perfect thing for me to do instead because it's not putting more stress on their sleep and it's not kind of like switching stuff up for them, but it is something that they're kind of used to before. So it is a way that you can, you can kind of use sleep to wake with your child's sleep before you actually do pick up put down. If they're not quite ready for pick up put down, you can start using sleep to wake or if you're not sure if they're ready. Um, or if your only problem is short naps and you don't want to do all pick up put down stuff because you just short naps are your only issue, then those are great ways to use this method. And then you'll also probably see some habitual waking form at this point, especially because they really should not be taking in any nighttime feeds by four months. If you are seeing that habitual waking, and I would say a habitual waking happens three nights in a row. So I've seen it before with my daughter that she'll wake up at the same time two nights in a row and then it never happens again and I wouldn't consider that a habitual wake up. It's really when it happens the third time, you have to assume that in the fourth time it's going to keep happening. So that fourth night is when you would do sleep to wake. So like I mentioned earlier, if your child is waking up at 3 a.m. and they're struggling to get back to sleep and it's really just all about linking sleep cycles together, you could at this age do pick up put down or if you'd rather not just lay around waiting for them to wake up, you can go into their room an hour before that time and do the same thing where you kind of gently wake them up and um, sit with them and wait for them to resettle and you might need to pat them a little bit as well. Unfortunately, if it doesn't work and they wake up too much, then you do have to do pick up put down to help get them back to sleep. But I do kind of like the idea of this more because you're kind of going to them. You're not just like laying in bed, just waiting for the crying to start happening. You're kind of initiating the, I know you're struggling to sleep, so let me help you do this. And what Tracy Hogg actually says in her book is that usually after one night, this is fixed if you successfully do sleep to wake or if you end up having to do pick up put down. But she recommends that you do it three nights in a row to just to totally make sure that that issue is gone. And I would second that as well. Just, you know, even if the first night ends with you doing pick up put down, the second night you might actually be more effective at doing sleep to wake and not have to do pick up put down. And then the third night doing that again. And then the fourth night, like, you know for sure that you're good instead of just wondering if you're gonna have to wake up or not. Then moving on to our last age range, which is really just anything older than a year as you get into toddlerhood and everything. Hopefully you're not seeing short naps at this point anymore and your child is probably only taking two, maybe even just one nap that should be a few hours long, but you probably don't need to do sleep to wake for them. Hopefully if you have taught them how to sleep on their own independently in the past, though you should, certainly can do it at this point. But the way that this method would be most helpful is if you have a nighttime waking, like the habitual one that I just mentioned, or if you have an early waking. So it's, this is especially thing with toddlers where they might get up at six and they could stay in their crib or stay in their room if they're in a bed and just kind of play and talk to themselves and hopefully not disturb their siblings or disturb you. But obviously it becomes more of a problem when they start to disturb you and they're supposed to be up at seven. So the way you fix this is basically the same as the habitual night waking, is you go in an hour early. So if they keep getting up at six, then you go in at five and you wake them up. We're going to assume, like when Tracy Hogg talks about this for toddlers, she assumes that your toddler is sleep trained and has a healthy relationship with sleep, that they've been taught to sleep independently. And so this isn't shouldn't be as terrifying as a thing. So she even suggests like getting your toddler up and just like changing their diaper at five, like doing all of that and then saying like, oh, it's not time to wake up, let's go back to sleep. And then that'll hopefully get them tired enough to still stay asleep until the 7 a.m. I have not ever done that with my toddler, but lately, um, I'd say like maybe once every week or two, 
she has been having, we think she's been having nightmares. She kind of wakes up in the middle of the night and cries really loudly. And one of us will go to her and just kind of comfort her and she's fine. She just goes back to sleep. And that's the great thing is like us going into her isn't going to like wake her up more. She has a healthy relationship with sleep. So it's not like we're messing her up by like interacting with her in the middle of the night. But there have been times that we've gone in there and she's been really wet. Like somehow she peed through the side of her diaper or something ridiculous like that. So I've had to do a couple diaper changes with her <laughs> in the last like month, I think maybe once or twice, which I've never done before. And I would have been absolutely terrified to do if she was any younger, cause I wouldn't have wanted her to wake up and like wanted to start playing with me. But it's something as, as a toddler, like she really wants to go back to sleep, which is really fascinating. And so I, I do think that doing the whole diaper change and then saying like, it's still night, go back to sleep, it's not time to wake up yet. They'll still be tired enough to want to sleep. And so I do see how this method would work really well with a toddler or an older child. I've just never experienced myself. All right, so that's essentially everything Tracy Hawk says in her book about sleep to wake and the ways that you can use it when you have different problems and different aged children. It feels like a pretty effective technique. I honestly have not used it that much in my own experience. I forget about it all the time is my problem, but it's such like a gem, especially when we got sick and I couldn't do pick up, put down. I was like, what am I going to do? And then I remembered sleep to wake and that helped with a couple of her naps, which was just such a blessing. Obviously, like I would always recommend trying sleep to wake first because it's just less, less effort on your part as a parent. And if you can just get away with doing sleep to wake to like sleep train your child, do that. But you can try sleep to wake and then obviously integrate pick up put down into that. If attempting sleep to wake doesn't work, then obviously you're just gonna do pick up put down anyway. So why not try it? Anyways, if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. If you've tried sleep to wake with your child or you've done it a lot with them, I'd love to hear your experience down below as well. It's not something you hear often about at all, even less well known than pick up put down. So I'm very interested to see if anybody else has done it successfully. If you did like this video, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you want to stay more updated on future